Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about the liquidity preference and money market equilibrium which is also known as your LM curve. So what is the LM curve? The LM curve is simply a curve which shows all the equilibrium points in the money market. I'm pretty sure you learned a lot about the money market in the previous video. So we all know that there is equilibrium in the money market when the demand for money meets the supply of money. So when there is equilibrium in the money market, we obtain the equilibrium level of interest rates, income as well as real money circulating in the economy. Okay, let's take a look at this equilibrium in the graph. So this is your supply of money and this is your demand for money. So this gives us the equilibrium at point A where the interest rates levels is at I0. From the previous video, we learned that the supply of money is actually M1, right? So M1 is that slightly broader definition of money, which is public cash plus K times the money multiplier. So as you can see, the money supply is actually independent of interest rates and income. That is why it is a vertical straight line. Let's very quickly look at the dynamics of this money market diagram. So if let's say the real money supply were to increase to M over P1, um, this can be due to maybe an increase in the nominal money supply or a decrease in the general price level, right? So if the interest rates did not change, what you have here is an excess supply of money. So interest rates will have to fall to point B so that the market clears, okay? The market will have a new equilibrium with the interest rates level at I1. Okay, so let's look at the intuition on why this is the case. You see, when interest rates fall, the opportunity cost of holding money falls. All right, we had went through this in the previous video. So when this opportunity cost falls, then the demand for money increases. Okay, and this is the speculative motive of holding money in action here. Uh, basically, people will want to consume more today than in the future because of a lower um, interest rates. So here's a layman explanation of what is going on. If I have to put my money into a place which earns me very little interest, I would prefer to actually take that money out of that place and spend it today instead. Okay, let's move on to the case whereby the real money supply falls, so the entire vertical line will shift to the left. So the real money supply can fall, um, again due to two reasons, right? It's either the nominal money supply has fallen or the general price level has increased. Okay, so if the interest rates did not change, then you have an excess demand for money. As you can see, when the interest rates level is at I0, the demand is more than the supply. So for the money market to clear to a new equilibrium, interest rates will have to rise, which brings us to point C. The equilibrium interest rates is now at I2. So the intuition behind this is that when the interest rates rise, the opportunity cost of holding money rises as well. Therefore, the demand for money is going to fall. And again, this is the speculative motive in play. People would want to consume more in the future than today. So here's a layman explanation for this. If where I'm putting my money in is earning me more interest now, you know, I would really just leave that money there so that it makes me more interest income so that in the future, I can withdraw that and I can spend more. Okay, so that was the basics of the money market equilibrium diagram. So let's take a look at the graphical derivation of the LM curve, which again shows all the equilibrium points in the money market. So obviously you're going to need the money market diagram, um, which is a graph with the nominal interest rates against the real balances. And you're going to use that to derive your LM curve, which will be plotted on a graph with interest rates against GDP, which is the same as the IS curve. So what you need to do is to change the income level to see a change in interest rates. So what you see here is actually the transactionary motive for holding money in play. So what's going to happen is you're going to shift the demand for money when the change in income occurs. Okay, let's take a look at the diagrams to see how this is being derived. So you're actually going to need two sets of graphs as discussed previously. Okay, and... Um, on the left hand side, you're going to have your money demand and then you're going to have your money supply and this graph over here is your money market diagram and the one on the right is going to be your ISLM. So your ISLM space is going to have interest rates on the vertical axis and income on the horizontal axis. So equilibrium in a money market gives us an equilibrium level of interest rates at I0. And 
we'll just assume that the income level y not is positioned over here, which gives me an equilibrium point A in the ISRM space. So do you recall that we need to change the income level to see a change in interest rates? So we're going to increase y not to y1, okay? And let's see what happens in the money market diagram. So obviously, due to the transactionary motive, your money demand is going to shift to the right, to L1. So given the new money demand curve, you see that there is an excess demand for money if the interest rates remain at I0. So interest rates will have to rise and we will be at point B, which is the new equilibrium in the money market. And interest rates is now I1. Okay, so take note now that our new point B in the ISLM model is over here. Okay, because you have a new level of interest rates, um, which is resulting from the increase of income from Y0 to Y1. So moving on to the next step is pretty simple. Let's assume linearity, which means that we're going to assume that the LM curve is going to be a straight line. So you connect points A and B, and there you have your LM curve. So take note that these things inside the bracket over here are all the exogenous variables that affect the LM curve. And in this case, the only exogenous variables here would be um, the money supply, the nominal money supply, as well as the general price level. Just like the IS curve, let's take a look at the dynamics of the LM curve. So the first type of dynamics would be a movement that occurs along the LM curve itself. So what are the things that cause movements? I think you should be pretty good at this at this point. So it is changes in endogenous variables that causes this movement, right? So things like a change in income, okay? So income here is an endogenous variable, which will result in a change in interest. So let's take a look at the graphs. Let me show you how the movement occurs and also go through some of the intuition behind this movement. Okay, so this is my LM curve, which you just learned how to derive. Uh, my sincere apologies to everyone out there. The variable on the horizontal axis should be income instead of real money. Okay, so uh, that's a mistake on our part. We apologize uh, sincerely. So if let's say my income level were to increase uh, from Y0 to Y1, then uh, there'll be a movement along the curve from point A to point B, which raises the level of interest rates from I0 to I1. So let's take a look at the intuition behind this movement along the curve. So when the income level increases, then there will be an increase in the demand for money. And this is shown in the transactionary motive of holding money, right? So once this happens, that means there is an excess demand. And for the market to clear, the interest rates will have to rise, as you have seen earlier in the derivation of the LM curve. So of course, it works the other way around as well. When the income level falls, the demand for money will fall. And that will give me an excess supply of money. Therefore, interest rates will have to fall so that the money market can clear. So movements are actually pretty easy. Now, the more important one would be the shifts or the LM curve. Okay, so this is literally the most important type of dynamics that you have to take note for uh, this chapter so that it will help you in the following chapters in macroeconomics. So shifts or the LM curve occurs when there are changes to exogenous variables, things like your nominal money supply as well as the general price level. So when these two things change, what will happen is there's going to be a shift or the LM curve. And just to let you know, the LM curve shifts in a vertical manner. So it's either vertically up or vertically down. Just let me quickly draw the two diagrams, the money market diagram as well as the ISLM space so that we can go through this shifting of the LM curve. Okay, let's say the central bank decides to increase the supply of nominal money. This is known as a expansionary monetary policy. So things that the central bank does can also affect the, the economy in a certain way. So the money supply curve is then going to shift to the right, and uh, like you see over here, okay, of course this is due to a higher numerator, that's why it's further to the right. So what you see here again is an excess supply of money, so for the money market to clear, interest rates will have to fall, and it's going to bring us to point B in the money market. So interest rates is now at I1. So take note that the income level has not changed, it is still Y0. So therefore, point B is going to be here on the ISLM space, and there you have your new LM curve. It is a vertical downward shift of the LM curve. Take note of the new notations within the brackets. So here's the intuition, right? Uh, the intuition for the vertical downward shift of an LM curve. So this is the same case when the generic price level falls as well. Because when the price level falls, then the real money supply increases, right? You see? So the real money supply is going to increase. So the intuition is this. At every level of income, 
the interest rates is now lower due to an increase in the real money supply. Just remember that anything expansionary will shift the Allen curve down. So let's look at another case where the price level now increases. So the real money supply is then going to shift to the left. Due to the larger denominator, the real money supply is going to fall. Okay, so the entire vertical line shifts to the left. Okay, and now there is going to be an excess demand for money. And for the money market to clear, the interest rates will have to rise to I2. So that will bring us to point C in the money market diagram. And as for your LM curve, take note that your income level again has not changed. It is still at Y0. Therefore, point C is over here. So the whole LM curve is going to shift vertically upwards. Okay, so you've got LM2 which shifted due to a new price level of P1. So you see it's a vertical upward shift. Okay, so when there's an increase in the price level or anything that's contractionary, you will see a vertical upward shift of the LM curve. So this is the same when the nominal money supply falls. Okay, this is known as a contractionary monetary policy. Okay, the central bank is going to reduce the nominal supply. So the intuition behind this is that at every level of income, interest rates is now higher due to a reduction of the real money supply. Okay, so that is a simple intuition um, as to why it is a vertical upward shift of the LM curve. Okay, we've just finished the most important part of the video, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pay attention anymore. Okay, we're going to be talking about rotations of the LM curve, but uh, we're only going to go through this in the mathematical derivation of the LM curve because you will not really be tested on um, rotating the LM curve in the Introduction to Economics uh, syllabus. So let's look at the mathematical derivation of the LM curve, which will potentially help you with the rotations if you ever encounter it. So we need to find out what is the LM curve equation, which is again a linear equation similar to your IS curve. In order to do this, we're going to need two equations. Okay, we're going to need your money demand equation and we're going to need the money supply equation so that we can equate them together to get the equilibrium uh, level of interest rates, uh, money supply, etc. So the money demand equation looks like this, as you have learned from the previous video. And the money supply is essentially just the nominal money supply divided by the price level. Okay, so we need to form an equilibrium, which happens when the money supply equals to the money demand. So since both of them are the same, let's just call them M, right? So MS over P equals to MD over P equals to this string of equations, which is the demand for money, right? So we can actually just sum it up as this, okay? It's actually the same as the money demand equation, okay? So what you need to do is to actually convert this equation into a linear function. You basically need to have interest rates as the vertical axis variable and income as the horizontal axis variable. Okay, so this is really much easier than deriving the IS curve uh, using the mathematical approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the interest rates components to the left-hand side and everything else to the right. Okay, then I'm going to uh, make interest rates a subject of this equation. So there you have it. This is already the equation for the LM curve. This portion over here is known as the vertical intercept terms. And it is going to be always negative. Okay, why? Take a look at this thing over here. So M over P would definitely always be more than H0. Why? Because M over P here refers to the entire money demand, whereas H0 here refers to part of the money demand. So when something is part of an uh, entire entity, obviously it's going to be smaller, right? So when you take H0 and you minus M over P, you're obviously going to get a negative figure. So what does this imply when you draw the LM curve? You have to always make sure that it comes out of the horizontal axis. Okay, it, it will have to come out of the horizontal axis because if you have to expand the vertical axis into its negative region, you will see that this is the negative vertical intercept that we've been talking about. So when you draw your LM curve, just try your best to make it stick out of the horizontal axis instead of the positive vertical axis portion of it. Well, at least for the initial LM curve that you draw. Because, you know, when you shift your LM curve, especially upwards, chances are it might actually cut into the vertical axis at a positive region, but that's okay. At least make sure that the initial LM curve is drawn as what you see in the diagram over here. And obviously, H1 over H2 is the gradient of the LM curve. 
since it's in front of y, we call it the coefficient of y. So h1 here, uh, just to recap, refers to the sensitivity of money demand to income. And uh, when h1 is going to rise, your entire gradient is going to rise. Therefore, you will have a steeper LM curve. And if you go the other way around, when the sensitivity falls, then you will have a smaller gradient, which means a flatter LM curve. So the intuition behind this is that a change in y will cause either a big or small change in money demand, okay, depending on the sensitivity, whether it increases or becomes smaller. Uh, hence, this will create a big or small change in the interest rates level. Okay, so the intuition part is really quite easy. Um, let's move on to H2, which represents the sensitivity of money demand to the interest rate level. So when H2 increases due to a larger denominator, the entire gradient will decrease. Therefore, you're going to get a flatter LM curve. Um, going the other way around, if H2 were to decrease, then you will have a bigger gradient, which means a steeper LM curve. So the intuition behind this is simply a change in interest rates will cause either a big or small change in money demand, depending on the size of H2, right? And um, either a big or small change in money demand will then cause a big or small change to the interest rates again. Okay, so that is how it affects the slope of the LM curve. And that brings me to the end of this video on the LM curve. In the next few videos, we'll be talking about the ISLM model, where we combine both the curves to analyze the economy. So thank you very much for studying with Quick Economics. We'll see you in the later videos.